Hello there, this is Samil Khatter from V8 University. I'll present the design example of shear wall. Uh, this is in this picture as you can see this is shear wall. Shear wall is generally the wall which is reinforced with steel in it. Now, shear wall are specially designed structural wall adapted in building to resist lateral forces from winds earthquake shear wall are provided in the building to resist the seismic load that uh, occur on the building it is provided between columns stairwells lift wells toilets utility shafts etc shear wall should be designed for ductility to resist earthquake now we'll see the classification of shear wall first one is simple rectangular type with flanged wall as you can see this is simple rectangular type and these are the flanges at both the sides consider this shear wall as I section and this one is simple rectangular type and this one is coupled shear wall and this one is framed with infill and this one is column supported shear wall this is a full shear wall at top this one and it is supported resting on column and this is the core type shear wall generally the shear wall which is used in practice is core type shear wall that is used around the lift lift case and the other one which is used is this one that is simple rectangular type with flanges now moving upon to placement of shear wall shear wall should be placed in in such a way that it is symmetrical to the plan so that it avoids the torsional stresses in it as you can see this is a perfect example of placing the shear wall or this is the way we can place a shear wall and uh, for provision uh, for provision of shear wall against the lift we can place like this sorry for the drawing but we can place like this symmetrical it is again symmetrical to the plan so that the torsional stresses can be avoided in the building as you can see in this picture this is shear wall that is one is provided here other one is provided here and in the plan as you can see uh, these two are symmetrical again these two are symmetrical so this is how the shear wall should be provided in the building so that it avoids the development of torsional stresses in it now moving upon to next slide yeah uh, for this design example, we'll use three codes. One is IS456-2000, IS13920-1993, and SP16. Now moving upon to example. Design a simple shear wall of length 5 meter, thickness 250 mm, that is subjected to the forces dead load and live load, and seismic load. A wall is a high wall and uh, grade of concrete to be used is M30 and grade of steel to be used is FE415. Now axial load for dead load plus live load gravity load is 2500 seismic load 450 and moments are 750 6000 and shear force is 40 and 1000 yeah now step one design load for this we'll consider the load combination based on two codes is13920 clause 9.4.3 and is456 table 18 now i'll read the clause 9.4.3 if the gravity load adds to the strength of the wall its load factor shall be taken as 0 0.8 
so for gravity load we take the partial safety partial safety factor 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 into the gravity loads dead load plus live load and plus for earthquake load we need to take 1.2 as partial safety factor so this is for axial loads we'll call this value as p1 so p1 value what we get is 0 0.8 into 2500 that's gravity load and plus earthquake load into 1.2 we get is 2540 kilonewton now second case based on is456 as you can open your is456 page 68 and there is table 18 on table 18 there are the three load combination given one is dead load plus live load dead load plus earthquake load dead load plus live load plus earthquake load and in our case we have been given dead load live load and seismic load seismic load that's earthquake load so we'll consider the third case from table 18 so for third case the factor of safety partial safety factor given is 1.2 so we'll multiply this value dead load plus live load with 1.2 and again with earthquake load with 1.2 and what we get is 3540 kilonewton we'll call it as p2 and now and now again for moment we'll consider partial safety factor 1.2 into both the moment that's 750 and 6000 and similarly for shear force we get 1.2 into value of adding both the values of shear force what we get is 1248 kilonewton and moment we get is 8100 kilonewton moving upon to next slide we have a check for need of boundary elements as uh, thickness of the wall is given thickness of the wall is given as 250 mm if the thickness of the wall is not mentioned then according to clause 9.4.2 uh, uh, sorry 9.1.2 from IS 13920 the thickness of any part of the wall shall preferably, uh, shall preferably not be less than 150 mm so while designing make sure you take the value to be greater than 150 mm now i that second moment of inertia bd cube by 12 uh, width is 250 d is full length of the wall that's 5000 bd cube by 12 we get is this value 2.6 into 10 raised to 12 area area that's a full total area of the shear wall 250 into 5000 and z is section modulus that's i by y where y is the distance from cg of the wall to the outer phase of the shear wall as we can see our, our shear wall is symmetrical so our y value is basically the total length divided by 2 that's 2500 now uh, z value section modulus what do you, what we get is 1.04 into 10 raised to 9 mm cube and this is the plan of our shear wall now to find the stresses the, the formula to find the stress is p by a plus minus m by z p value for load value will consider the maximum value that we got from this both cases 2540 and 3540 so in our case the p value that we'll consider is 3540 3540 area is this 1.25 into 10 raised to 6 and moment is the maximum moment uh, sorry factored moment that we got in step one this value 8100 kilonewton meter and z is section modulus again and for fc max maximum stress we consider p by a plus m by z 
and for minimum stress we consider p by a minus m by z and these are the values that we get sorry yeah now from clause 9.4.1 is 13920 the require sorry uh, where the extreme fiber compressive stress in the wall due to factored gravity load plus factored earthquake force exceeds 0.2 fck boundary elements shall be provided along the vertical boundaries of the wall so in our case the allowable stress is 0.2 fck that's 0.2 into 36 newton per mm square and what we got the maximum stress is sorry 10.62 newton per mm square and the allowable stress is 6 newton per mm square so uh, there is a need to provide the boundary element as the maximum stress exceeds the allowable stress value so for value of maximum stress greater than allowable stress either increase the thickness of the shear wall either the thickness of the shear wall should be increased or barbell should be provided at this phase at both the phase here so i'll take trial one i'll adopt a barbell type wall with two enlarged end of size 1000 mm by 1000 mm and i'll keep the central part same as it is so a new section that i get is 1000 by 1000 mm barbell type wall this and the central part is same as it is the length is 3000 and the thickness is 250 mm now i that second moment of inertia uh, for this barbell type wall i'll consider it together so i multiplied it with 2 b d cube by 12 plus a h square this is b d cube by 12 plus a area of this barbell type wall 1000 into 1000 I took 10 raised to 6 and now H is the distance between CG of the shear wall as we see that this is symmetrical shear wall so the CG is at this point 2500 and the CG of barbell type wall is 500 mm from this phase so the value of h that we get is 2500 minus 500 that's 2000 so bd cube by 12 plus a h square and now considering the central part bd cube by 12 b is 250 and d is 3000 considering the full length bd cube by 12 and this is what we get for second moment of inertia and now area this area is the total area of the shear wall considering the barbell type and the shear center portion of the shear wall and now again substituting the value in this equation p by a plus minus m by z we find this value 3.60 newton per mm square and these are the modified value this is this is the maximum stress at the top and minimum stress at the bottom as we see that the maximum stress value is 3.60 and it is less than allowable value 6 newton per mm square and this section is considered okay now moving upon step 3 layers of steel provided the depth of the section resisting shear for depth of the section resisting shear we consider center to center distance from this point till this point center to center distance between barbell type wall so what we get is 4000 now shear stress tau v is equal to vu by bd from clause 9.2.1 is 13920 the v value that's shear value maximum shear value i'll show it to you mm. 
VU is this value 1248 1248 into 1000 I converted it in Newton and B B is the width of the shear wall center portion and D is the depth of the section resisting shear so tau V value that we get is 1.25 Newton per mm square and from clause 9.1.5 IS 13920 if the factored shear stress in the wall exceeds 0.25 FCK then yeah sorry or if the wall thickness exceeds 200 mm reinforcements shall be provided in two curtains each having bars running in the longitudinal and transverse direction in the plane of the wall and our shear stress value is 1.25 and limiting shear stress is 1.36 but in our case the thickness of the shear wall exceeds 200 so steel has to be provided in two layers now moving on to next step steel required minimum steel that is required for shear wall according to clause 9.1.1 4 is the minimum reinforcement ratio shall be 0 0.0025 of the gross area in each direction so 0 0.0025 into gross area that's 1000 into 250 we considered here 1000 because we are considering it for per meter so 625 mm square so steel in one layer is 625 divided by 2 312.5 mm square now assuming 10 mm bar the spacing is 251.2 mm now from sp16 page number 229 we can modify this value we'll consider 10 mm bar and the spacing what we get is 250 mm center to center distance uh, as you can see in SP16 the, the value that are given in the value that are mentioned there are in centimeter you need to convert it into mm so what we get is 250 mm now from clause 9.1.7 IS 13920 the maximum spacing of reinforcement in either direction shall not exceed the smaller of lw by phi that is length of web by phi length of shear wall in our case that's 3000 then 3 tw 3 into the thickness of the web that is 3 into 250 or 450 mm well so in our case the least value is 450 mm so we'll keep the spacing 450 mm now AST provided is 628 mm square that's considering 10 mm bar with spacing 250 mm center to center this value we got from SP16 and PT provided is 0.251 now PT provided we find we find it with 100 into this AST value divide by B into D B is again the thickness 250 and D is this 1000 now moving on to the next slide step 5 shear taken by steel PT provided is 0.251 this tau C value we find it from table 19 IS 456 for our case the grade of concrete is M30 and uh, grade of steel is FE415 so we get this value directly that's 0.37 for PT 0.25 and again as you can see in table IS456 tau C max value for M30 grade of concrete is 3.5 Newton per mm square now VUS that's shear taken by stirrups that we find it with tau V minus tau C into BD again we consider this D value for unit width that's 1000 mm so what we get VUS is 219.5 kN now we'll check whether the steel we provided is sufficient or not 
with this formula VUS is 0.87 FY ASV D by SV this formula is given in clause 40.4 AIS 456 that's on page number 73 now ASV by SV we need to find this value ASV by SV uh, is and this value 219500 is this VUS and dividing it with 0.87 FYD we get 0 0.607 we get this value 0 0.607 and provided ASV by SV per meter from minimum steel uh, ASV we provided is 628 I'll show you ASV provided is 628 mm square and ASV by SV uh, dividing uh, we are considering it for uh, per meter unit length so dividing it with 1000 we get 0.628 this is ASV by SV provided 0.628 and this value is ASV by SV that was required so minimum steel provided is sufficient to carry the shear force now moving upon to flexure capacity of web for this we'll consider the minimum downward force the load the load value will be considered minimum downward force we got two value of load one is yeah two five four zero and the other one was three five four zero so for flexure capacity of web we take minimum downward force 2540 kN now to find the load on web the formula is load total load that is this 2540 into web area upon total area we are doing it with proportionate method so load 2540 and the web area 3000 into 250 i'll show you the picture so you get the clear idea yeah, this is a web and this is a flange so 3000 into 250 we take it and we'll divide it with total area just a minute yeah Web load into web area upon total area so this is the load on web 962.72 now from NX annexure a is 13920 the formula for lambda phi beta are already given into it now for lambda pu upon fck tw lw pu value is load on web 692720 that's in newton fck tw and lw and what we get is 0 0.307 similarly you can refer 5 and beta these formulas are already given in an a the 5 value that we get is 0 0.030 and beta value what we get is 0.515 now again this formula already given in an a x u by l w and x u star by l w x u by l w we get is 0.143 and the formula is phi plus lambda divided by 2 phi plus 0.36 and x u star by l w is 0 0.0035 divided by 0 0.0035 plus 0 0.87 f phi by es we get 0.66 now uh, on annexure a of is 13920 there are two cases mentioned one is for xu by lw less than xu star by lw and the other one is xu by lw greater than xu star by lw in our case xu by lw is less than xu star by lw so we'll take this formula 
and uh, MUV what we get is 0 0.038 FCKTW LW square sorry there is a mistake this value is 0 0.026 there is mistake over here so 0 0.026 into 30 into thickness of web 250 and length of web 3000 square and the value of MUV what we get is 1771.41 kilonewton meter now step 7 force on boundary elements moment on boundary element is found by mu factored moment minus muv 6328.6 kN meter and equivalent axial load we find it with uh, this moment on uh, boundary element and dividing it with center to center distance between the shear wall barbell type shear wall that is 4 so what we get is this value now to find compression load from vertical load to find the compression load we have to consider the maximum downward force and to find the tension load we need to consider minimum downward force so load on boundary element the formula is load into the area of boundary element dividing it with total area so load is maximum load 3540 area of boundary element 1000 by 1000 and total area is this and we get compression load to be 1287.2 kilonewton and for tension load we consider minimum downward force similarly we just change the value of this load 2540 and the tension load what we get is this now boundary elements are designed as columns with lateral ties confinement anchorage and splice length now design of boundary element now we need to design the boundary element as short column as you can see in is456 clause 39.3 PU, PU that's axial load carried by the member and this is the formula to find the axial load carried by the member 0.4 FCK AC plus 0.67 FY this is ESC now FCK that's grade of concrete AC is area of concrete AC is area of steel and concrete. Now, assuming PC to be 0.8 percent, the minimum value we are considering for this AC 0.008 into the area of the barbell type, or sorry, call it boundary element, we get 8000 mm square. And the, uh, substituting all the values, we get the value of PU as 14128 kilonewton and this turns out to be greater than the value of it I'll show you the value greater than equivalent axial load this value 1582.15 hence we say that it is safe now same steel will be provided on both the boundary elements from uh, table 95 of sp16 we find that we need to provide 12 number of 32 mm bar uh, make sure that the number of bar you provide are in the multiple of 4 so we get 12 number of 32 mm bars now last step that's special confining reinforcement from IS 13920 clause 7.4.8 this formula is given ASH is 0.18 SH FCK by FY into AG by AK minus 1 here ASH is uh, let me read it ASH 
ए एस एच इज द एरिया ऑफ क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ द बार फॉर्मिंग रेक्टेंगुलर हुप्स एंड ए जी दैट्स क्रॉस एरिया ए के इज एरिया ऑफ कन्फाइंड कॉन्क्रीट कोर इन रेक्टेंगुलर हुप एंड एस इज द स्पेसिंग बिटवीन द लेटरल टाइज एंड हेयर वी कंसिडर द कवर थिकनेस टू बी फोर्टी एम एम सो एच वी गेट इज वन थाउजेंड दैट्स टोटल लेंथ of boundary element minus we need to provide the cover on both the side so subtracting it with 2 times the cover what we get is 920 mm now introducing a cross tie as h exceeds 300 mm now h is simply 920 by 2 460 mm and s is the spacing between the lateral ties as you can find the value of s from the example given over the clause 7.4.8 it is mentioned that the value of s should be the minimum of 0.25 times the total length of the boundary element or 100 mm and total length of the boundary element is 1000 so 1000 by 4 is 250 or 100 100 mm is the least value of both so we consider 100 mm again ak that's h square so we get this value ash substituting all the values in this equation we get ash as 108.62 mm square now for this value 108.62 mm square will provide the reinforcement from it from clause uh, sorry from table 96 sp16 12 mm of bar with 100 mm center to center distance and now i'll show you the final plan of it and yeah this is the boundary element 1000 by 1000 and uh, eight bars of 36 mm that we provided and uh, 10 mm bar at 250 mm center to center distance This is three thousand mm of web, one thousand mm boundary element. So this is all for detailing of shear wall. This was the reference that we use and Subramanyu, P C Vargas. For any queries, you can mail me on cutter somil dot suresh at v i t. student dot ac dot n thank you thank you for watching this video